Hello, everybody, and welcome to live story generation with Avi. Oh, dang it, I was so Ooh. sure I was going to get it right this time. There, um, there it is. <laughs> it's so much harder than I, than I would have ever expected, but you know yeah. what? Um, so we are Young Screenwriters, an online resource and community for our upcoming screenwriters. And in these sessions, we break down the outline for an entire feature film on the spot here with you, with nothing prepared. And well, not nothing. The only thing that we have prepared is the prompt, which is coming of age film. Which Whatever that we should means. define. Interesting. We should define yeah. what that what that means to us going in mm -hmm. so for me coming of age obviously is i'd say the the overcoming the over you know overarching theme is a young person who learns what it means to be an adult usually in their community or in their destiny in their life like they've learned something that helps them grow up like it's a film about growing up in some way that's my interpretation maybe you guys have a different view um um avi what do you what's your take I mean, that's, that sounds right to me. And I, I, when I think of coming of age stories, I think about there is somebody who is still is like trying to find their way in the world who maybe starts off a little bit naive and comes to kind of understand something about the sort of normal world that they're living, that, 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 that they're living in through experience. Uh, it's mm -hmm. about growth. Um, it tends to involve, um, you know, children become, you know, learning how to grow up. Sometimes it, it, it could be about, say, um, somebody who is in the LGBTQ community, like coming to terms with, uh, with who they are. It always kind of comes down to figuring out who you are and how to, I guess, come to terms with, with that sort of context. Does that yeah. make sense? Is that That's worth a better salad? definition because I feel <laughs> like, no, 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 because I feel that, that, touches upon the the idea that it's not doesn't have to be about growing up specifically yeah but it has to be discovering self-discovery in a meaningful way Me right. meg lafarve i think that's her name who wrote inside out and has done other awesome movies like that actually like explained coming of age films as basically that the, sh the different the main difference is in the flaw typically in coming of age films you have a flaw related to like your identity and it's about like maturity and like figuring out who you are. And so she compares that to films like where it's like an adult who has like a negative flaw, like selfishness or something. In these coming of age films, it's more tied to identity than that, typically. That's how she that was sense. defining it. Um, so it's like becoming who they're gonna be. And I thought a challenge for this would be to make it like an indie vibe coming of age, you know? So like eighth grade type vibes, Lady Bird, even though I don't think that was actually indie, just low budget, coming of age. What are some other examples? Juno? Jojo Rabbit. Is that yeah. coming? It's I guess it totally, is, yeah. Totally, totally, coming definitely, of age. definitely coming of age. Because he starts off with a very budget. childish world view and through experience, low-ish, I mean, lower than, you know, Thor. <laughs> it's not low budget. True. It's not low budget. Um, yeah, hmm. Good examples of coming of age. It's like, yeah, it's stand by me. Mm -hmm. Um, it because because I think the, the thing that's key is it, it tends to be about I guess coming to grips with a harsh reality that you're in through experience. It's it's always kind of an unpleasant experience that you kind of go through to come to these revelations, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And that could it's be personal, pains, or could right? be yeah. It's grow it's growing pains, but it's also it's not you know it's being thrown into the pool in the, in the deep end when you barely know how to swim. The graduate. And, yeah. Graduate. Typically, the in these films, the objective is something really grounded. You know. Like it, at least in like the low budget ones, if we're aiming for that, like the objective tends to be like something very like true to life for those, for that like genre I've found. And I'm, there's gonna be exceptions, but it tends to be like something involving romance or something involving like, I'm gonna get it, go to college or something like I'm right. gonna do X, you know, something that's kind of like a, a humble objective 
and yeah. uh, that means in a breakfast lot. Breakfast Club, them. in Breakfast Club, it's um, which I think is a coming of age film. It's Get Out of Detention, right? <laughs> yeah, <Survive. laughs> yeah. I th you know, a good classic example of uh, coming of age, I'd say, is probably Boyhood, where we're literally following somebody come of age. Yeah, and it's sort of structurally loose because it takes place over a lifetime for him, but it's. Um, you know, it's just sort of as he learns to live in the world through living in the world. Yeah. I've not seen that one, but I've heard that it's very good. Eighth grade, um, um, Michelle posted eighth grade, and that is a very solid example of the coming of age. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, Submarine I watched recently, and that was kind of an interesting film because it was all about, it was about experience and like the sort of dissonance of like, between like a young person's imagined romance of what something is going to be. Like they imagine everything is a film, uh, the protagonist, but, and then sort of realizing that like life isn't just the romantic, you know, idea of like the self narrator. It was very clever in the way they, I, I don't know if you've seen that one. Um, Do you all recognize uh, these films from the comics? Richard Ode uh, directed, he's a fantastic. Um, nice. He's brilliant, yeah. Do you all recognize these from the comics? Oh yeah. 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 Dead Poet Society. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah. Something so I quick, noticed. In... Oh, I was going to explain how the story planning thing works for people who aren't familiar yet. Um, Go for it. So let's. I shared a link at the very top of this chat, so you have access to view this. And Adam and Avi, you have an editable version in our own chat. Um, nice. But this is. Oops, I copied this from when we were doing a rom com. Um, this is kissing cousins, a, really. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, tentpole document, which is something sort of like a beat sheet, um, but much, much, much more streamlined and very protagonist centric. It's it's like based on a lot of different story ideas, but is something like this exact version of it is something we put together. Um, and we find it's really helpful for building out a story. And once you know all of these beats, you have a really strong understanding of what your movie would look like, of like what it's gonna feel like and the overall shape it's gonna take and what kind of transformation your character is gonna undergo. So the way that we typically do this is we start by brainstorming some concepts at the top of the page here, and then we start filling in all of this information. And usually, it feels like you're like making the boulder and the boulder takes forever. Then finally at some point you push it down the hill. So it's like a lot of idea, idea, idea. And then finally it's, it like tips. And then we have a fun little movie on our hands. Um, Something that I yeah. notice in um, coming of age stories is that they have a very high rate of protagonists not getting what they want, but getting what they need. Mm -hmm. um, like they, maybe they're not going to, you know, go get get their prom date, um, but they'll learn something very valuable in the process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, um, sure. get what you I, I, get what you uh, need, not what you want. Yeah, so I, 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 I read a script once that was about somebody who was desperate to get into a film school, you know, like he was in high school, he's desperate to get into film school. Uh, and he doesn't get into the school of his choice, but in the process, he learns what he had sort of been missing in high school and the friends that he had kind of been neglecting in his ambition. And I think that's that's the kind of ending you see a lot in these things, because ultimately it's less about the protagonist, you know, winning their dreams. It's really more about them realizing what's important in their own lives that they weren't, I guess, mature enough to understand prior to that. So that's like prior like their priorities shifting is kind yeah. of their inner need, I think, is the yeah, is one way to interpret that. Why don't we start brainstorming who this could be about? Um yeah, Patrick hmm. Dempsey's teen films, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um What are so we feeling? I'm like I don't know. I'm feeling uh, something. Obviously, want to do. I want to do a young person, right? Like that's the easiest yes. way to get into this. Um, what if about... we didn't do a teenager? Like, what if they were younger? Like, I feel like high. Well, fine, not 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 a teenager, but not high school, because I feel like high school is the common go to. Is like this like YA. Like we're talking about tenth grade, tenth grade rather than a senior. 
tenth grade still high school. I'm talking like. School. Oh, I'm talking I you like said you wanted to say like have middle you school. Seen, no, no, no. I'm have you seen eighth like grade? Max. Have you have you seen eighth grade? I yeah. have. Yeah. It's fantastic. Wonderful movie. It has one of the scariest scenes of any non horror movie that I've ever seen. Um, yeah. But um, I can't believe Bo Durnham thinking... directed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, he, and, he, and following that up with a performance in uh, Promising Young Woman. Um, yeah, but uh, Alexi, are you feeling like that's kind of the realm that you, you want, we want to yeah, play? Yeah, like that or younger. Like, you know. Yeah, kind of yeah I think that that would be a fun challenge. Maybe kind um, of interesting. Um, what if we played with maybe someone who's homeschooled? Because I'm, I'm so used to kind of seeing these kids dealing with school travails. I don't know if I've seen one that's about somebody who's homeschooled and their, their sort of social life. Mm-hmm. That could be interesting. It doesn't have to be that, but that's that's a thought. Usually, they it's usually homeschool. I would imagine would a uh, homeschool narrative would be about extracurricular activities or strictly about family in some way. Um, and probably or the friends that they make kind of outside of their life who go to the high school and have their own sort of social circles. Mm-hmm. It would like typically that would be something. Probably that would be like breaking out of whatever their parents want for them or their family wants for them. Would be the, the direction I see that going. That could be interesting though. I don't know a lot about homeschooling, but I know that sometimes you like take classes at local schools. Well, let's let me ask like, a question. Let me ask a question. Mm-hmm. Maybe the answer lies in why is this person homeschooled? Like that sometimes can be an interesting subject. Like for example, a person who comes from a insular community, like, um, I don't know. I remember reading this horribly depressing article about this uh, uh, guy whose whole family were, he was a conspiracy theorist who was like prepping a prepper and Mm. all his kids were homeschooled because he believed that like, obviously the education system was poisoning their minds, but was like, the apocalypse is gonna be here and me and my 12 children <laughs> yeah. who we've educated are all gonna live here. We're gonna survive for 50 years after the bombs, you know? Um, like, I'm not saying it has to be that, but like, I think sometimes when homeschooling is sometimes a necessity, sometimes it's, but it's, sometimes it's a choice by the environment. Like that could be mm-hmm. something we could play into. Yeah. Homeschooled sure. after they're bullied is interesting. Um, I just want to say, I don't know if I want to get into religion. I feel like that doesn't have to be religion. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, no, 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 no. I wasn't saying it was. I'm just saying. It doesn't have to be a polemic. Like most of the times that I knew homeschooled people growing up, which maybe it was my sample, (laughs) my particular area, it was because of religious reasons. And so I think, though, that we could like lean into more, like a more unique reason. Well, I know some people who kind of are maybe the opposite side of the spectrum where it's that their parents were incredibly progressive and, you know, had their own kind of sense of how to educate their child that's more progressive than the school system and are very open with what they allow their child to do. And then they're, what was, you know, This reminds me of that Vigo Mortensen film about him and he's trying to get custody of his kids. He was all raising them in like side of his van. Came out what? like two years ago. I believe you. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. It was, it was very. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But I had a friend who had to be homeschooled growing up. She had Captain to be Fantastic. Her... Captain Fantastic. Mm-hmm. That film, twenty sixteen. Uh, yeah, that film. I don't know it. I had a friend who had to be homeschooled because she had scoliosis, and so she had to take like a few years at home to work through that. Like that's what the parents decided was the best way, and then she came back in, and she had like skipped middle school. And so somehow she was like the most like a well adjusted of all of us because she like missed the abyss, the like awfulness that is middle school. And she was just kind of bopping around. I don't know. I feel like that's probably unique, but <laughs> it was like she just skipped that awfulness and then hmm. came right back into public school. So she got elementary school and high school in a public school. That's kind of interesting, though, because if we're talking about these sort of, uh, you know, these, these coming of age stories where people learn through hard experiences, what happens if you miss those experiences? Um, how do you kind of learn those same lessons? It could be an interesting thing to explore. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. especially if, uh, as, as Jan in the comments says, some people homeschool to protect their kids from the real world. Well, you can't protect them forever and eventually they're going to have to learn certain hardships and it could be interesting to follow somebody as they learn those hardships what if it's yeah. somebody who is like so 
<laughs> what if it was like a kid who was so sheltered that like they've romanticized maybe the idea of being bullied a bit like they want to be bullied <laughs> just to be like wow that's so exciting you know <laughs> they, they like want to have like an edgy life so they go to middle school and they're like they're like oh i better i want to like get some lived experience here and like this like this will be great for my novel you know <laughs> maybe they're maybe they're they're terrified that deep down they are the bully and they need they need the 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 assurance that they, in fact they are the bullied yeah. and would it be funny if it was like this kid who's like trying so hard to be like a target but like they can't find a bully <laughs> no. yeah like like all these kids are actually like decent or something and they're like <laughs> and well adjusted <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and like now that's an I objective. Like that's an objective to great. find a bully. You know, yeah. they want to be bullied so they feel because more if you normal. if you're bullied, it means yeah. you fit into a, a system. And that, <laughs> it's, it does. Know, it's the ground floor. It's coming in through the ground and working your way up. And like sometimes, like you know, young people can like take like an idea and like overly like take it seriously. Like for example, like the idea of like oh, no great per no great person ever like had it easy you know like they had to go through adversity like that could be like an ideal taken to an extreme like oh i have to be like my favorite whatever oh yeah well, like what if their life is like actually really really great like like not like that they think it's too nice and they have to like like they're actually like super well adjusted and everybody is really great to them and they just are like i'm not edgy enough to make my novel like to like make art or something like i'm never gonna be <laughs> like yeah, but here's, it's that's an interesting reversal of what these stories normally do right because normally it's like somebody go, comes in naive and comes out the other side understanding the hardships of life what if somebody here like you're saying like they they have a charmed life and they they feel like i'm gonna be messed up when i grow up because i haven't experienced hardships and come out the other side understanding but actually sometimes it's okay to live an okay life yeah <laughs> yeah that's sometimes fine is fine <laughs> 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 that's a reversal of what we're used to i kind of like that let's go with that's it let's go with it okay <laughs> anti-conflict so, <laughs> i'm in well it's somebody who so wants conflict that they end up i don't know creating the wrong type i don't know yeah, we would need could be like, very me. specific like what would be if you were some kid who had a perfect life i feel like finding a bully isn't quite tangible enough but if it was like what is like the the most terrible but like kind of like kiddish, like not like truly bad, but like bad thing that's specific that could happen to you so that you like can write novels. Like it would almost be like, I want to have like my heart broken, you know? Like mm -hmm. I want to like, like something like that, like where it's like- I want to love and lose. Yeah, but like what, what could it be? Like I want to be humiliated at like graduation. Like I want my bully to like, <laughs> like, like something like what would it like what would a tangible i want trauma <laughs> yeah like but like what exactly is it like is it a diagnosis <laughs> like probably not that's probably too far but like i guess so people in the comments too what you all have ideas about a specific thing that to them because they could like also be seeking a bully and like doing all these things but like and that could be the second act fun but they would have a specific thing that they want. Hmm. Yeah, the first heartbreak is a is a good start. Yeah, but like something more specific. Um, I mean, that can be. Like, be I want to wanna fall if? in love with like this kind of person and then have her like dump me for this reason, and it like forces me to find myself, and you know, sets me what? on a path to. Deep what if, what if what if this character has a list? Hmm. But would be a, I feel like we'd still need some at the top of the list though. Yeah. I like you know? I like the heartbreak though because if you go into a relationship hoping to have your heart broken, that's a really tricky relationship to invest your heart your, yourself in because you because you're aiming for it to fail but then so, you, it's not going to work out unless you invest maybe maybe here's here's the here's the thing maybe it's like they're they have like an artistic project that they want this all to fuel like they're mm. like making a film or something and like, it's that's, like it's a that's kind of silly but it's a thing i could see it working like i need to be bullied for the film you know because so like this is a shitty short film you know whatever maybe yeah, it's for like a this is great, but like, there's like no like, like 
where is the like the truth like where's the conflict like draw from your yeah. life and like write what you know and then the kids like i have to go get some trauma and the parents are just incredibly supportive the whole time and completely grounded and like well adjusted <laughs> like, everybody's like, I've great mind, i've got a mind fine material you know <laughs> and so, yeah. so it's basically this person stirring up trouble for material. <laughs> it's like, I want it to be so that when I'm ostracized, it's because they're being bad to me and not because I literally don't have any friends. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, so let, this, let's get, this kid is actually, let's go to the fly underneath then because I feel like we're actually close. So they have this belief that they have to suffer to make great art. I mean, maybe this is a little too on the nose, like for like, because we're writing a story. I don't know, but like, is that is that what they believe that's out of whack and that's really messing them up? Like, what is the thing that's like putting them their everyday, their normal world out of balance? Well, I mean, here's a thought, just sort of, kind, of, like like externally, it's I want this sort of trauma so that I can fuel my art and feel like my life means something. But what if it's like secretly, it's just like this person doesn't have much of a social life and want and just needs there to be a reason that isn't just inherently like you know i'm just not that great at having friends like if it's mm -hmm. you know because like everybody else had a chance to sort of socialize in school and this kid maybe didn't um you know what it, what, it, what if it really is just a sense of i need the sort of lack of social interaction in my life to have meaning mm -hmm. Maybe, and, yeah. And that's the thing that they have to kind of like learn to accept that actually it's just, you know, it is okay to be in that situation. Mm -hmm. I just, I love the idea of a kid pursuing heartbreak. I feel like that's so fun. Like, like it's so, lot. like what if, and then I can imagine that something is the inciting incident, but then their response is they tell their parents like, I must go to public school and get trauma and I must experience bad things for the sake of my art. And like, that they have like this whole warped idea. And so That'll they're- me normal. They're, yeah, so the new world <laughs> is them in public school. And the parents that, that are they, just so frustratingly well-adjusted, like, well, okay, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, but actually, I actually had things. a thought about, I actually had a thought about that. Um, Cause if, 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 if this kid really is just saying, I want to experience, hardship and is going out of their way to kind of alienate people and create problems that they get consequences. I feel like well-adjusted parents could honestly be antagonists in that kind of situation, you know, just, or at least obstacles because it's like, no, we want to take care of you. And this is like unhealthy, like from the kid's perspective, they could be getting in the kid's way. Yeah. It depends how That's young true. we go. Like high school is a different conversation than eighth grade person having this I saying like these things. Younger. Because I like younger, younger is sillier. Like it's more of like, oh, you're having a game. Just make sure you don't hurt anybody, you know, right? <laughs> like, what, if, what, what if it was a like early high school freshman, like the inciting incident is I'm going into this new world of high school and I know right. how high school is supposed to be. And That's I feel good. like, I, like I'm, I, don't, I don't have the social ability. Like I don't have this, I don't have the skill set to enter this world and I need that skill set. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And like, I like, like that. I'm going first like, day of high school. Like, yeah, like I'm going okay. into high school, but my high school is homeschool. Like nothing's changing in my life, and I'm I don't feel like I'm growing. And I'll, and I see the kids who I'm used to playing with after like after their school are changing, and I don't feel like I'm changing. So and that's I'm fourteen. That. You're fourteen at that around that age. I have an idea for a title. Go hmm. for it. Um, punch me in the heart. <laughs> Great working title. Let's do it. <laughs> Punch me in the heart. <clears throat> I I like this idea a lot. I mean, do we want to give it, the, like, what do we want to make, like, the objective tangibly? This is, this is absolutely. I like Alexi's idea. Oh, yeah, that's I nice. I like broken. it. Yeah, I like, I like that. It's like, ha like, fall in love with somebody who rejects you, you know? It's but, like, like create, maybe it's like I want to be, like, yeah. publicly dumped at prom like, or something like he like like he has like, this whole like scene he keeps saying he it doesn't have to be a he but i think we have kind of fallen into the he we've fallen into the trope yeah i think i love that i i, I love that it's that it's um 
an in, it's not so much about the public perception that it's about this imagined experience in their head. Like it's about going through the experience, not so much about it being like a public experience. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like maybe yeah. I like this though that like, yeah, the kid's really smart or the kid's a prodigy. Like the kid's like really good. Uh, Michelle was saying of oh, Richie Rich. I really like the idea of it being like, I don't know, like I was imagining not necessarily like, like Privilege, extraordinary. Like yeah, like I wasn't necessarily imagining like wealth privilege. I was imagining just like the absolute best normal you could ever ask yeah. for, you know? Like, like well-adjusted middle-class parents who don't really yeah. like, you know, uh, who did a great job uh, treating you with basic res human respect, you know? Uh, yeah. Which is like unfortunately basic. not common. Um, no. as a <laughs> I mean, a, a certain level of privilege, like if, yeah. if, if we're talking about a young white boy with a heteronormative parent set, right? Which we don't have to, honestly. Yeah, um, we don't have to. We could, we but we don't have to. I guess but we I have, have to factor in other, you'd, yeah, you definitely have to weigh in other things if we were. I feel like that movie's been made um, <laughs> a lot. I don't Which know. one? The one about the white kid who is like on an ego quest, you know? Right. Because it's yeah. about self-actualization, right? Like that's right. really. It's just, we want somebody who hasn't known hardship and is terrified that they're, they're vulnerable because yeah. they because they don't have an immune system, essentially. I love the idea of them like searching for heartbreak. And then like in the first half of act two, they like go rapid fire through like seven quick relationships and they all get to, like it's like oh that didn't that wasn't quite it was it like they're just trying to get breakups to happen and rejection oh, yeah, as like, soon they, as like, possible i'm imagining this kid like getting dumped and then trying to cry and being like crap yeah like, just, yeah, that like, wasn't it. yeah that wasn't yeah. it they didn't have you enough know? charisma you know <laughs> yeah i mean I've, i mean like the low point of this movie is obviously like he is actually going to fall in love with somebody. Yeah. It is going to lead to breakup. She's going to realize that he had intended for them to break up, which really hurts her. And he's going to come out of that situation feeling like, actually, this is really bad. I hurt somebody and I feel like shit. And it doesn't make my life feel more rich. So, so their flaw then would be about them having the romanticized idea of like emotional like trauma, like... So, so yeah. specifically, they don't see the emotional violence of like reality yeah. because it's all yeah. in their head as imagined narrative. I love well, that. They're also yeah. very that selfish because they're that, trying yeah. to like, yeah. So, yeah I'm just saying they're selfish. No, yeah. that, I'm, I'm pointing because you're, what you're saying is right. Um, just the idea of like, you know, he's only thinking about how it affects him. He's thinking about how he's going to fall in love and he's right. going to be rejected and he's going to feel trauma but he's not putting any thought into how it affects the other person. And the moment of shock for him is when he realizes it affects both of them and it's terrible. <laughs> so here's my question that I don't know how to phrase this without being too controversial. Be <laughs> controversial. I'll try my best. Does it work if it's not a, like a heteronormative white boy? Because if, can. The whole, can. if the whole point though is that he's supposed to be like, completely privileged in this world, then does that work to have these other, like, are we ignoring the reality that like, that would already be more complicated? I think to say that, at least in America, that you can't have privilege and not like, there are different levels of privilege. Like there's money privilege, mm -hmm. there's like social, like there are different levels of privilege, but you don't, I don't think it has to be a white person, um, but it would have to be kind of a middle-class person. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it would be interesting because if, it, like, let's say it is a person of color or somebody who's LGBT, they're going to be aware that if if things are great in their own personal life, there is a world out there that is sort of poised to hurt them. Um, mm -hmm. And right. th and then, like, when you have a character like that looking to get hurt, the question is, how do you differentiate that from the hurt that is sort of systemic that's going to come at them regardless of what they do? And I think you can't really ignore that part of the world and kind of say like, well, that's not something that this person has to worry about. Um, so it, 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 yeah. I think you're articulating exactly what I was trying to kind of ask about really well. The right. one thing so, I would say though, is that a young person has a distorted view of self too. Like these, mm -hmm. like there are a lot of young people who just like, because it hasn't happened to them by the time they're 15, 
you know, and then when they become an adult and they actually see the world, that changes their mind. Right. Then it becomes a story about that, though, because if it's a coming of age, yeah. that's the thing that they learn. And do we really want a person who is, say, gay, try, looking to get hurt because they feel really privileged and then experiencing homophobia and feeling terrible? Is that the kind of story that we want to tell? Right. I don't, I don't think you, I think you can keep the original fun of the story and make them gay. Like, it really depends on what part of the world you put them in, because then that's somebody who is destined to encounter hardship. And then, Unless, you know, th yeah. I mean, that could be the motivating factor. It could be, I want to experience hardship now on my own terms before I experience it on somebody else's terms so that I'm ready for that. But then it is a movie about that. And the question is, is that the story that we feel equipped to tell? Yeah. And I mean, I think it could also be interesting though, if he, if, I mean, if we, if the character was gay or something and they were kind of like anticipating bad responses to that, if, if that's like, I don't know, it's, it's hard because yeah, you can't ignore these things if he's, if they're seeking hardship, you know? That's I just think that yeah. any, any young person can, can be like self distorted and self romanticize like and many young people are deluded no matter where, from where they're from you know like a lot until you're i don't know i i think i think there's room it just it does come down to what you say where because i, I feel like this. yes what's i, I was hmm? just thinking like 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 first like this character if they are self-deluded in that way they're going to grow up and they're going to grow up in that very specific way which means the story can't avoid that but what if what if, and here's just a, a, a bad idea, throwing it out. What if our protagonist is sort of the kind of cliche that we're used to of, you know, middle-class, white, heterosexual, but the person that they are going to in, to sort of inflict trauma on themselves is somebody who would systemically have encountered trauma or will encounter trauma and has to sort of realize that like the like the selfishness of seeking this thing out. And meanwhile, the person that he's sort of using to feel this is already familiar with it just by virtue of being. Like mm -hmm. maybe maybe the girl that he wants to break his heart is <laughs> is black or, or an immigrant or, or somebody who is familiar with trauma in the real world and not the sort of fan, like fantasized, like I want this to structurally work out for me because I feel like it'll make me stronger kind of thing. Like that could be the person he learns from maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. the one I'm kind thing of picturing I like can... I'm, I'm kind of picturing like a younger ladybird, like in beret, deciding that she like wants to traipse out into the world and seek to have her heart broken, sort of a thing. You know, yeah. like that yeah. kind of a vibe. And... I think we should definitely make it a woman, um, just because well, the one th the one thing I want to avoid is making the. <laughs> making a white guy who's trying to find heartbreak and is deluded about like the real emotional reality, having the optics of making that funny and making that fun could like be like over romanticizing narcissism. That's true. Um, okay. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. 14 year old girl. <laughs> it's, I, I just want to just point out by the way, that like there's totally like a different era where like none of this would even come into consideration where it's just like, oh yeah, I'll just put colorblind casting and gender blind casting and somebody will figure it out. It's like- 2005 and like, baby. I, and, <laughs> and now we're in a position where like actually these things matter and these are the things you actually have to think about when you are first coming up with your concept and will inform every element of your concept. I think it's a good lesson. Yeah, I think it's it's extremely important to think about, especially because we're going we're trying to like make this fun, and you don't want to ignore things that matter, but you want to like create you want to create a situation where you can lean into that, um, and lean into the kind of things that we're imagining. Like we kind of have like a trailer in our like a vibe in our head already, and we want to find something that can fit the vibe without being untruthful or without like skimming things. Um, yeah, it's fun, but it's real, you know. Yeah, that's, optics, that's, uh, baby. Coming of age. So, <laughs> coming of age. So we have our per so we have our care protagonist. They does anybody the have idea ideas of... for names? Real quick, just our chat. Does anybody in the chat have ideas for her name? We can we, then we can keep going. I'll wait for those. Her, her parents named her girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Sorry, Adam, you were talking. I forgot. I was gonna say. I was, 
Yeah. Might be. No worries. So is this still the idea, the belief that she, they have to suffer to make, that she has to suffer to make great art? Do we want to do it? We could phrase art? it differently. Do we, do, we, do we want, is it, is it art that we want it to be or is it just, you know, to Honestly, be it's, in the world? The reason it's why really I said art. It's really hard to imagine. Like I am picturing Tish students, not gonna lie. Like, <laughs> like I'll be you know. more. There's a version, <laughs> of, but Alexi, Alexi, there's a version of this that isn't basic white girl. That is like a really like weird person who like has such a niche self romanticized built constructed world. Like there's a version of it that's very interesting. And then there's the version that's, I want to be basic Tish white girl. Like it, it's not like, it doesn't have to be that way. Like there's a, there's a version Rose that's Anderson, more unique. Well, there's a version that is more, um, I won't say Wes Anderson, but I will say uh, uses a more uh, unique lived experience and perspective that is surprising and appealing. Yeah. Well, she would be like, I like the name Kate, by the way. That's awesome. Um, so this is taking place in the present, I would imagine. This is taking place in 2021-ish era. Um, I, hate so yeah. I hate screenplays that are like, yeah, it's taking place in the 80s because that's when I grew up. You know, I hate that. It's the 90s yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, What was that film, uh, uh, the Jonah Hill movie? That came out um, 90s or something. 90s project. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. I kind of so, feel like her name would be like Katarina, like, like a full name, you know? Oh, yeah, that's her full name is Katarina. Can that be spelled with a C? Her parents should, would. Why, why it. wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be know. Katarina with a C? Katarina with a C. With a C is her is uh, like middle a name. Boat? With a C is her middle name. <laughs> with a C. Katarina with a C. <laughs> Isn't that Spelled a boat? W I T H E S S E. <laughs> okay, we're not freaking Elon Musk up in here. <laughs> yeah, Michelle, Michelle's bringing up uh, what I was going to bring up, which is it doesn't have to be like art, as in like, oh, I have a film project or I'm writing a book. It could be like her being like, I. this is what it'll be to be an adult. Oh, yeah. This is interesting though, that it's like, that is something that people deal with. Like, especially if it's, um, that reminds me of like by a shirt, you know, mm. where it's like, how, have, how are you sure? But it's, it's like also just something that, you know, like that exists with, you know, being gay before you have ever been with someone else. It's like, are you have that doubt of like, are you really? Like, how do you know? <laughs> and um, so that is interesting. I mean, I mean, here's a very coming of age thing. It's like, it's like if she thinks that she is straight and wants to have her heart broken by a guy, one of the obstacles could be when she starts trying to date a guy and realizing that she's just not into him. It's like, okay, I have to pivot to girls now. What's, oh, I, I wonder the what the reverse of that would be. <laughs> Like, oh, I think I'm into girls, but really, I just want a guy. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be like, because that that's because that's learning something about herself in the process of like, oh, I, I didn't realize that I was lesbian. That be. <laughs> I think that would uh -huh. be, it would be hilarious. That's more of like an SNL sketch, though, than a movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> what if we make her like, you know, she's working, she's like working on her novel about unicorns and it's just not the romance subplot just isn't coming together, you know? And she really needs some more heartbreak to like really sell uh, her unicorn novel. Is just it, me putting that art, out there. I mean, I like the idea of it being like, a, I like the idea of it being art because again, I just keep picturing everyone at Tish who's like, and then they do drugs and like, get shot and like all these, like they just like throw in traumas. Like it's a freaking like seasoning on top of things because oh, it's like- Oh, so what if it's, what if, Alexi, what if it's like a gritty, like Game of Thrones violent unicorn novel, you know? Yeah, like a really like dark <laughs> like thing and she doesn't know anything about it. So she's like- It's called the bloody horn or something. <laughs> well, well, here's a thought, here's a thought. What if like- I'm just the, not gonna let that go. <laughs> What if she like you know is spending all of her time dedicated to writing the story, and it's just not coming together? And by the end of the movie, she just has to understand she's just not good at it. It's just not. It's just not in her. You know. That <laughs> like she's she, not a she, good writer. 
She's like, she's like, she shouldn't be a writer. <laughs> she shouldn't be a writer. I love that. That's great. You know, I really feel like I should be an accountant instead. That's her, that's her uh, third act. <laughs> I, I should be a cinematographer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is interesting. She pursues a guy who has a girlfriend. The girlfriend gets pissed. She ends up being attracted to the girlfriend. That's fun. Oh, no, wait, no. <laughs> she ends up realizing, oh my God, I want both of them. And she's their <laughs> unicorn. <laughs> oh, my oh my god! I think that she cannot be fourteen for that. No, I know. But, I'm sorry, uh, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't help that make that joke. Um, I feel oh, like. <laughs> I mean, like it could be that, like she like sees this guy and girl, and she's like, "Oh my god, this is better than I could have ever dreamed. I'll be in a love triangle." Oh, that's you know? good. That is you know, good. and it's like, and she's just like. This is fantastic. Like this is going to be such a good thing. Like I'll just be in a love triangle, and uh, because the rejections aren't enough, you know. Yeah. Oh, but what so if? Maybe the <laughs> okay, so here's a thought. Let's say she gets attracted to. Well, she she wants to be attracted to this guy. She's not feeling it. She becomes attracted to the guy's girlfriend, but now the guy is like into her and his heart is broken by this whole thing. And he's just like a collateral victim of it. Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah. is that hot cold? No, <laughs> I, I, no, I, no idea. I, think, I mean, I think she absolutely has to like, just hurt people and not realize how selfish she's being. Yeah. You know? she, ha she has to leave, corp leave corpses behind her. Yeah. She's like damaging a bunch of people while like prancing through trying to get damaged. And, you uh, know, we can't say that this protagonist is not flawed enough. <laughs> it's true. So she believes that, so she is, her flaw is her belief that she has to, like she's willing to let other people suffer so that she can have heartbreak. Like right. disregarding other people in her search of heartbreak. Is that too, is that too big? It's, I feel like she would have a way of dealing with it, like a consolation, like she'd do a consolation prize, like, and not realize that. How how people would be hurt? Like you would account for it, like not really to the extent. Well, there's kind of an irony to it, right? Because the whole idea is she doesn't know pain and she wants to know pain, but because she doesn't know pain, she doesn't realize how you know how just completely damaging it is for other people. And so at, when she learns pain for herself, she all she, like that's the first time she understands really what it means to hurt somebody else, right? Mm. Like she doesn't mm. have a sense. She doesn't have a sense of it until until that point. So is that her inner need? Is that she needs to understand? Yeah, it's this ironic thing where it's like it's it's bad that she's searching for pain, but she does actually need to understand it. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. Yeah, there's something there. I like that. Um, so, that's growing up, coming <laughs> of age, baby. <laughs> so her inner need is like understand. Not like understanding the world doesn't revolve around her and that other people have pain too. Cause she's yeah. kind of just like using everyone around her as yeah. like props in her pursuit yeah. of heartbreak. Yeah. And so it's like, it's a moment. I kind of feel like it's like the tipping point to becoming an adult when you fully deeply understand that, like when you develop empathy in a way that's real, not like I yeah. should share yeah. my yeah. toys. It's, it's that like moment. that. Yeah. And it's like she, that moment of being like, holy crap, everybody else has their own inner lives. And and we know. would really be not doing something, we would be doing something wrong if there wasn't a school dance involved. Um, there has to be. <laughs> well, she's, I, I mean, like, I, I, just, I just think that there's an interesting way to put this, which is she starts off by tr wanting to use pain to understand herself, but ultimately through pain understands other people, right? Yeah. You know, that's 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 the subversion that she she learns. You know, the the experience that she learns is not herself, but other people through the same. Right. Thing. Um, I like I like that that quote from Jan in the comments. People are not playthings. Yeah. But she would say playthings are people. <laughs> I, is that I'm, her I'm just, I'm, No, I'm just I'm just joking. I'm joking. I really do uh, like this idea. That's this Toy Story. Fantastic. Jan says she maybe she gets caught making notes of the relationship by the girlfriend and boyfriend that spins things out of control. So like, she's like putting notes in the locker, like copying handwriting of the girlfriend and like trying to stir up like that. stuff for her love triangle. I like that. The running, the love triangle could be like a great running joke. Like, 
it could not even like it could be even just like a side thing like you know she could have like the main love triangle but then the love triangle that didn't work out you know <laughs> yeah i, I kind of like the idea of this like kid who is like not in high school who is just sort of like haunting the high school it's just sort of like in it all the time. It doesn't actually have any of these classes. And meanwhile, all these other well, kids. She doesn't are like, even go here, right? Yeah, yeah like all the other kids are like all the other kids are like slapping books around from class to class. And it's like, here's this kid who's like, I'm gonna come here and get into a relationship. I, I got nothing else going. So she's not actually enrolled in school. She's just going. To yeah, she, she's part not of her really education like, as homeschooler. Her parents <laughs> are just letting her do it. It's like she has free time. She's just hanging around the school, and all the other kids are like side eyeing her. It's like. Yeah, I actually have like important things <laughs> to do right now. <laughs> so yeah. let's uh, get started on this tent pole. Um, yeah, we have some stuff. We have yeah. the protagonist is Kate, Katarina. She's 14. Hey. Flaw, disregarding people in her search of pain slash heartbreak. Inner need, I affect other people and can cause them pain slash people are not playthings. That would make the, the thematic question would have to be something about like realizing that the like that you aren't at the center of the world, right? Like it's like pain doesn't make you a person. I don't know, like something like. I remember think of that uh, that that uh, George Harrison song, "Life Goes On Within You and the, But Without You." Right? right. What is the mm -hmm. importance? What is the importance of pain? Maybe. Yeah, or like something. Is pain, we can is pain to. necessary for self-discovery? Mm. Yeah, and different people will have different uh, answers to that question. Yeah, we could have the uh, burned-out uh, English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. You could have the kid who's like genuinely bullied, and like our protagonist can like go to this kid and be like, "Tell me your secrets." <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. They could be the that's mentor, so, right? Uh, yeah. So the mentor is <laughs> like, it's like, I, I, like I have flirted with so many people, and they've all turned me down. All can of them. Can I? Can I get? Can I? Can I like switch bullies with you? You know, <laughs> yeah. yours aren't really doing it for me. You know. And it's like, kids what did you do with... to get dumped? Oh, and he and she would scare off the kids' bullies, right? And they yeah. so they could be friends that way. Yeah. I kind of like that. So I she's like, that like all like protect you kind of like in exchange for information like <laughs> <laughs> but really i'd like like your insight you know like what do you feel yeah like? yeah so what do we want to name is the is the bully kid a boy or a girl and what's their name do we want the bullied kid to be non-binary maybe why not let's do it that'd be interesting let's the answer that. is yes the answer is yes and uh I just said the answer is yes, um, and I think. So, what do we want? Their their one thing. I just want to orient ourselves just to go linearly. What is what would we say is their everyday, their normal world? Like when we meet this kid, they're not homeschooled. Well, they are homeschooled. They are homeschooled. Oh. Sorry, sorry. They're homeschooled, but they're not part of the high school. Yeah, right? so they're absolutely charmed, truly surrounded by good people, right. like. Oh, I, just had a thought. Kind of I just had a, an, an intrusive thought jump in here. Um, just what if, and this is potentially rom-com territory, but you know, I, I don't know if we care. Um, what if Kate actually like over the course of the story falls in love with a bullied kid and that's the heartbreak. Oh, that's kind of cool. Like in, the pro like, like in the process of like going hardcore after other people. Or it's like the heartbreak of losing a friend. That could be. I, I like the like idea that it, I like the idea of them not having a romantic relationship with the the bullied kid for the one reason of the moment you and uh, you add romance, it takes sort of an element of charm and sweetness, mm -hmm. like friendship, like, like having a strand of friendship in there. I think gives a lot of weight. And like good. What if it is like? But I mean, like there is a heartbreak to losing a friendship, and maybe yeah. this girl wasn't even thinking about that. Like maybe oh, Kate yeah. was like completely not even considering the fact that like a friendship breakup can be the most heartbreaking thing of all. So she was pursuing this romance. And then really the thing that devastates her is when her, the, the friend that she's made is like, I can't think I'm done. Like Kate could, bully. Be, Kate could be using this bullied kid and the bullied kid is like, here's somebody who like, you know, is here in my life and likes me and values me. And then as soon as like 
Kate is like in a bad position with with her romantic pursuits, sort of like tosses Blake Kid aside, like you're not helping me. And Blake Kid yeah, like, really pained by that. Well, like especially if Kate at some point when she's like pissed at the world because things aren't working out at the ultimate test, she probably is like, this was purely transactional. Like I protected you for the information and you no longer have information for me. And therefore like F off. I like that the kids, the neighbor that makes that allows us to have easier. Yeah, yeah that's good. Interactions. Um, what if the bullied kid this, I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not in love with this, but what if the bullied kid like had a crush on what someone in the love triangle and that's the burn bridge there it could be could and it could also it. just be like she's like like the kate's like become a bully in her own way yeah yeah i think she's pretty psychopathic to be going in there and like like pulling we strings love, we love those characters you know we love know. those mastermind okay. characters but i kind of like the idea of kate is like lives this sort of charmed life and is pursuing pain and this bully kid is like, I, you know, I, I, people come after me all the time. I have like the worst time. I wish I was homeschooled, you know? Mm, mm -hmm. I love that duality there. That's really good. I wish I was homeschooled. Yeah. That's what makes, that's what makes this kid real, the real, like actually the mentor, right? Like from Kate's perspective, it's like, you know, help me find pain. But from the, but like from our narrative perspective, the mentor is, let me teach you what pain actually is, you know? Mm -hmm. So what, what's the name of this bullied kid? I love rhombus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. I love that. I love trapezoid. <laughs> Let's name the kid uh, Lee. Lee. L-E-E. -E. Yeah, that's good. Ruins friendship with Lee would be the ultimate test, right? Whatever it is, it's like blah, blah, blah. Therefore, like... Actually, heartbroken from friendship. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Um, do we want to have um, uh, Kate have like a book or something or a project she's working on, or do we just want it to be just I like I want the experience? No, I think that that makes sense to have it be like for a specific thing. If John was here, he would tell us we must have a specific thing. You know. Yeah, yeah. So what's, let's say that the object, like, I mean, is having her heart broken tangible enough? Or like, I guess like, it's like, what is the motivation? No, it would be, it would, I mean, if we were going to do it that way, I, which I wouldn't necessarily say is like to have, uh, to like have like the big one, like the big heartbreak. What is the big heartbreak? What What makes it bigger than like, like, if you're on the outside and you don't already know it when you see it, what do you assume that is? Romance, usually, I would imagine, right? Like, um, yeah, she assumes it's romance, and it's like it's just saying a breakup. Like, it's like, but it's like beyond that. It's like she wants like a true, like soul crushing thing that's gonna like make her like transform the coal into a diamond and like make her into like the artist or like the person that she's always wanted to be, like. She knows there's something like she's not quite it yet, and she's like, "This is gonna like transform me." Oh, what if it's a regretful breakup, like something like a breakup that is caused by something that, in Kate's eyes, Kate did, like Kate does something to ruin the relationship. Like, what if it's the that kind of regret that she's looking for? I don't know if she would be looking for regret necessarily, right? I think that she's not that smart, like not that like, she's not that wise, you know, not, yeah. not, not smart, fair, not that fair. wise yet. Like, this kind this of is like, more fun. This is more fun yeah. if it's like less well considered, you know. What if it's I like, like that she just wants to get her heart like stomped on, and that she's like romanticized this idea of like it being romance. She's like, I mean, like she'd want to be left at the altar if she could. But she's a middle oh, school. She's that's, like, I mean, the dance, maybe like right? early on, she's like, she fantasizes about being left at the altar and thinking about <laughs> all of the great, like, uh, thoughts and insights and great friendships. And I could finally go on that road trip with my best friend and forget it all, you know? But, like, you can't just go on the road trip. You've got to be left at the altar. Like, that could, that's definitely. Um, <laughs> what if, uh, 
what if it, I mean, like the, I, the, the sort of stereotype thing that we've kind of mentioned before is the idea of the dance. What if it's like, I want to get into a relationship with somebody, commit to going to the dance with them and then have them leave me before the dance so that I'm alone at the dance. Like, what if it's like specifically that kind of ticking clock of there's this big dance that's going to happen that she wants to be left alone at. She wants to like cry under the twinkly disco ball. <laughs> She wants to come under the, under the, the bleachers, under the bleachers <laughs> during the dance. <laughs> so, so here's here's a motivation. So, actually, what we have is written as the objective could be the motivation, and the actual objective could be like to be dumped at prom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just so I, stupid. I, <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Kate's doing Let's this do just for fun. Like for Kate, it's just sort of like you know, a story that she wants to be able to tell down the line. This but reminds like... me, weirdly enough, of like a, a good friend of mine from high school, uh, Jacob. We used to hang out like in his basement and we'd like listen to like, you know, obscure prog rock albums and like, like wear like outfits and like play beach guitar. And like, we'd feel so cool. Like it wasn't about like, it was because we were doing it. Like we thought it was, it was like it was like yeah we're better than everybody else in high school because we listened to fucking you know you know Emerson Lake and Palmer you know it was it was not about anything accessible or meaningful it was just about like the romance of being like yeah we're better we're cool because we have this unique interest interest that's totally insular um, I'm not articulating mm -hmm. that but like basically it's high schoolers thinking they're cool for something stupid and her version of that is uh, this weird heartbreak fantasy. Thank you, John, for telling me about the AR. I typed it with an AR, and then I was like, I briefly deleted the ER, and I was like, what is going on with my brain? But you're right. Mm. Also, she is, she's not like crazy. She's just- Eccentric. Coming of age. She doesn't know the world yet. She's like, like very much- She's looking for something Bird to do. Is eccentric, you know? um, yeah, like Lady Bird threw herself out of a car, and like, that is well, not healthy, but I wouldn't necessarily say she's like, do you, know what this, do you know what this reminds me of, strangely enough? This reminds me of the protagonist from uh, 500 Days of Summer. Like, mm -hmm. he romanticizes mm -hmm. the graduate for the wrong reasons. You know, Not saying this is a great movie, but... So I'm reminded of, and this isn't, this isn't a show that I watched, but I'm reminded of an episode of Glee that I remember I was in the room and it was playing, where there's a character you who... You totally weren't watching it, right? I've never... I've, I don't know the character names, but like... There's a character who wants to be on some like show of like some school play, but is told like you don't have the life experience. So like she like tries to go have sex before before like callbacks or something like that mm -hmm. because she thinks mm -hmm. like that'll make her deep enough. It's kind of it kind of reminds me of that. It is. It is that except for it's just more like emotional. It's, 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 it's a little bit more. It's a little bit more innocent and less innocent at the same time. Yeah, exactly. It's like more nefarious, but like. Also, emotional. Not. I like I like AJ's um, suggestion about the dance getting canceled because I'm thinking about if you're trying to create the sort of fantasy perfect narrative of things you want to happen to yourself. I like the idea of just various parts of it just don't go according to plan. Mm -hmm. Like you want to get broken up so that you're abandoned at the dance. Oh well, there's no dance, so like that's anticlimactic. And it should know? shut down by something stupid that she did. Like, right? So it should always be her fault. <laughs> of her flaw, whatever that is. Can we think real quick about the inciting incident? Yeah, like, we need something to change the status quo. Like what's like the thing that like sets this all into motion? I think the call to action should be that she demands to go to public school. Like that she tells her parents like I'm enrolling in public school kind of a thing to what? go get my heart broken. So I feel like it's like if she was gonna be a novelist, this would be the rejection letter from the publisher. Like maybe when you're older, you'll have more life experience and then like you'll know true heartbreak and you'll be able to write about it better you know it would be that kind of a thing i have a thought Another, uh, yeah hmm? um what if what if it's just like she's in a status quo world and she has her friends and she st and she notices that a close friend of hers is different now because he went through a breakup and that triggers something in her like what if it's something like that? Hmm. Like seeing it as somebody else and being like, "Oh no, I'm I'm missing out on this next right. stage." Like they like they are just starting school now in September. They're just starting school, and my friends are already deeper than I am. 
Yeah. That could be. I think it. Dep this is where we'd have to decide for sure about the art or not. It could be. Like, it, could be it, it could be like a, like a rolled into one thing, or it's like, hey, I just noticed you're like deeper than usual. It's like, well, I know pain. Did you read my book? Yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the inciting incident is that like uh, people don't like her book. And like the parents are really nice about it, but are just like, you know, like you'll gain like more life experience and time and like, it's fine. And like, there's no rush. And yeah. she's just like, yeah. so the real people who are going through things are not yeah. connecting with her book. <laughs> so she self published and it was a disaster and it did not go as she had imagined. And she takes a review maybe too seriously, yeah. like that she doesn't know life or something. People don't like her self-published book. <laughs> and her parents would be like, you know, it's okay to, you know, you're only in ninth grade, you know. <laughs> this reminds me of something. This reminds me of, um, there was this TV show that eventually got pretty dark and, and high stakes and personal and whatnot. But like the first few episodes of the first season seemed kind of light and airy. And my dad wasn't connecting with it. And the thing he kept saying is, oh, this showrunner has never suffered. And like, it was a thing that I just, I just, it just sort of stuck with me. The idea of him saying, like, I can just tell the showrunner never suffered, and that's a, that's such a pervasive. What thing. show was this? <laughs> um, play in the comments, but you know, yeah, it's not particularly important. But and and, the, and if anything, we now know like the showrunner has caused others to suffer. But like, it was just an interesting thing okay. that I, that like, oh, that's your reaction to that fact of it, like, like because it isn't, it it feels kind of light and airy. You're getting that vibe, and I kind of, I kind of like the idea of people reading her book and having that same reaction of like, I mean, it's like fine, it's a little surface, you know. <laughs> I love the idea that her, you know, unicorn book just like wasn't like emotionally resonant enough, you know. <laughs> yeah, she gets criticism that it wasn't emotionally resonant. <laughs> And, uh, so there's like, always one thing that so I just won't like. I had all these things. Like I had like death and like blah blah blah. And she's like, yeah, just it wasn't. It's good for Nano Rimo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. This is true, Jan. That is a little bit of a challenge. That would she get reviewed if it was self published? Maybe for the sake of this, it could be that she she could also just like have like submitted it to some kind <laughs> she of gets a main comment. <laughs> <laughs> It's her fan fiction, Adam. Oh, there, there we go. Oh my god. It's a fan fiction where she changed the names. Mm -hmm. People don't so how about so this is what I've written down. So she has an absolutely charmed life, truly surrounded by good people, the best kind of average. People don't but the inciting incident is people don't like her self-published book, gets criticism that wasn't emotionally resonant. Her response is that she's very upset. She talks to her friends and realizes that the issue is she's never experienced heartbreak. So she convinces her parents just to let thought. her enroll. What? Just a quick thought. If she realizes the issue she's ever experienced heartbreak, I wonder if that could be rolled in with realizing that they've experienced heartbreak and seeing it's working for them. Mm. Yeah, I think or, that. She'd be a writer that, she looks up to. Like they think that they've experienced heartbreak. What if it's and all of these things combined? Like, I, want, I want that personal thing with her friends also. You know what I mean? With my friends. Like it's in her peer group. Mentor, isn't it? Like we want well, the, the uh, we don't. Right. Yeah, that realizes that all good writers have experienced trauma. Yep, she's a Wattpad writer. Wonderful. That's so silly. <laughs> all right, so. She's so blessed. So maybe her like one friend also like wrote something and it's like getting good response like the friend like posted a poem on facebook or something and people are like oh my god it's like oh, it about her. oh here's one. Oh my god her, are you okay like the dog dying or something no no her parents the, her friend's parents got divorced right so oh. she could make a joke like she's trying to stir trouble between her, her parents maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not working because they're rock solid yeah and she's she's like, like, are like, you sure you like each other like, she could like doesn't be like, that bother you it's like <laughs> my, my that... friend like like her parents got divorced and her facebook post got so many care emojis yeah <laughs> 
and her like yeah that that could be really funny <laughs> Good writer with the I didn't get any care emojis on my posts. <laughs> <laughs> Not a single one. Maybe one heart. God, please, you know, I hope, please, I want my parents to have a really good divorce. Yeah. I want it to be so my So her fault. response would be he tries to break up her parents briefly. <laughs> but they're but rock they're solid. Rock solid. <laughs> so then she, she can, convinces them to enroll in her in public school. She could like tell like her mom, you know, like, you know, dad, he's been like, you know, seeing other women or something. She'd be like, <laughs> wait, 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 thought. What if the idea for it being a romantic breakup comes out of this effort? It's like if she tries to break up her parents and it's just not working. She could like sit down with her parents and they might say like, look, you know, I've experienced my fair share of romantic heartbreaks in high school, but like this one is working fine. It's like, aha, that's it. To be as rock solid as you, I need to go through what you went through. That's, I like that a lot. That's really functional. I really like that. The parents would be like, to, in this story, the parents would be like really fun roles to play. Yeah. There we go. That's really good. That's really fun. I just really want her to wear different outrageous hats all the time for no reason. She's like, like you know, she wears a shed, she wears a I just floral. watched um a total tangent, but like I just watched Hal's Moving Castle for the first time. And I love how like her her hat shop and like she mm -hmm. wore this shitty ass hat the whole time. <laughs> even though she like owned a hat shot. I thought that was great. Total side note. Love that movie. But her antagonist is her. Is it her parents though? I mean, I realize I, I, I like them so. as obstacles, but like, yeah. I think the, the antagonist is probably just whoever she's trying to get into this relationship with, right? Yeah. So the first obstacle would be probably that she has to like choose a target. Right. It's a boy. It's a boy first, <laughs> and then she ends up meeting bullied kid, who isn't a writer. What if she tries to romance the bully? That's interesting. <laughs> I don't know if it works, but <laughs> there, there's so many fun ways you could go with this. Like, like you yeah. look good at hurting people. <laughs> 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 Want to punch me in the heart? <laughs> Man, I I I I'll, I love the idea of like them just like getting like getting dumped by somebody and being like, nope, that's not it. <laughs> like, ugh, yeah. not, I, I'm not, I, I'm, my hands aren't even shaking. Like, what is this? <laughs> mm -hmm. What's the midpoint? Is the midpoint when she realizes that? That she's getting. That's like a rule change or like a setback. It could be the first breakup isn't enough. What if it's like the fact that like the first breakup didn't work? I think I, I think I'm attracted to women. There are fewer viable options here. I think it has to be bigger than that though. Like I feel like that all of that stuff should, like, It'd should be like getting pulled out of public school. Like that people realize she like just sh stirring up drama and she gets kicked out of public school. Like they were like, you I don't even that. go here. <laughs> I love that. I love that. But it could also be like she's found her target. Yeah, but maybe she also gets kicked out of public well, school. Well, if, 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 exactly. if her goal is to get into a relationship that she can feel sad about losing, what if it just sort of spreads that she's not somebody that you want to associate with and then nobody really wants to be in that kind of relationship with her? What if it's just like she, she becomes sort of too unpopular to get into a relationship? I like her getting kicked out because then you really hit this point where you're like, how are we possibly going to proceed? Like, yeah. And that's like kind where of, it's, yeah. That and maybe it's that like that everyone also. hates her so much that it stirs up people asking questions about like what classes do you even take? Like, <laughs> like weren't you in yeah. this other class this period? And she's like, it should, it should be something. She should get kicked out for something like tangential to like her uh, efforts to you know find heartbreak, like missing classes repeatedly or bullying or something like that. You know. So is she like not enrolled or is she enrolled? I think she should be enrolled and maybe gets kicked out. I don't know. She's like stealing school supplies to like 
Dude, but, I love that. Fine. but I, I love but also that. like if she's kicked out, then she is suddenly known to everybody in the school as like that weird kid who doesn't even go here and had to be like forcibly removed. Like that may, that that turns off a lot of potential students. No, that's true. That's so it's also that's like an true. edgy thing, though. Oh, like, oh, it, maybe it it's not. Be. Maybe oh, here, here it is. Here it is. She's not like expelled, but she's like given a suspension that will like carry over into prom or the event she wants to be at. So she's mm. not allowed to be on school grounds for like that week. And you can get like suspended quietly. You don't get expelled quietly. Yeah. What if, so, what if it's, it, it's, there's a negative and a positive that happened at the same time in the midpoint. Like what if the midpoint is shortly after she's realizing that her attempts to like romance this guy and get broken up with him, like just isn't stirring her. She gets expelled, which is a big problem for her. But then that expulsion attracts uh, this this girl who's like, "Hey, I like that. That's edgy," and now she's, in, and that's what sort of kicks her off into the relationship that's going to work and be. I like you know. that a lot, but I think a suspension gets the same thing we want without like adding the plot problem of being okay. like, "Oh, but cutting us off from being on school." But does she go to does she go to the school? Like, could they expel her or suspend her, or could they just say you're not allowed on the grounds? I think we should make her a student. Um, like, she, she just doesn't give enough. Like, so right. she's like not necessarily going to class. Like, she just doesn't right. really get it. Like, she's so she she's becomes not a student at the beginning of the story. The parents enter the school. Is that yeah? Like, like, like I feel enroll. like I feel like Act One. Um, sorry, Act Two. She should like have just enrolled in the school. Like, she asks her parents to enroll in the school so she can have these experiences. I mean, I'll be honest. If that's the case, I'm not a hundred percent sure we need it to be and like you know, no no like feel free to veto me but like i'm not 100 percent sure it needs to be an art thing it could just be a yeah. she's been homeschooled her whole life now she's going to school for the first time and she feels like to really fit in she needs to understand hardship you that know what i mean work too. um i think it's just more of like a funny like, hook it's a funny i kind of like the the, art, the book okay because okay. i think i think it's a easier pitch which okay. um but if but, she gets kicked out, okay, so it's okay, fine. So we keep the art, but like if she gets kicked out, it could be that it means that she won't be able to do the whole like the dance thing. Um, and so, so like that, if it's a so suspension, like, if it's a suspension, it's not, it's not like a permanent thing. Like she could still like sneak like in. She's supposed to go stay at home and like she's supposed to not come to school and she's not allowed to go to the prom. Right. Like she's, and, she's like she's suspended, but she's totally banned from prom. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, but then I, I do kind of like the idea of that's the thing that gets the attention of the person that she really should be doing this experiment with, right? Which is this woman, which is this you know this this high school girl who's into that, and that's like something that reveals something to her about her. Interesting. So who is this person? The who I assume is the antagonist. What if it's the girl? I mean, like to simplify things. What if it's the girlfriend of the boy that she was going after in the love triangle and she realizes like she's been going after it? I love that too. That feels I right. Like it. I like it. <laughs> she's been going after the wrong <laughs> angle of the try. Um, Maybe it'd be so fun she, to like have the have the the guy in the love triangle think that Kate is into him. Like because he has such a huge ego. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I like the idea of she, you know, she was going hard after that guy. She wasn't feeling it, but now he's bitten. Um, <laughs> but also, so like, she's already like breaking up the relationship, and now she's breaking up the relationship again because now like the girl in that relationship is interested in her. I also had a thought that like, what if at this point, once she sort of like made that connection, she just sort of like casually, like not maybe not even intentionally, but just kind of stops talking to Lee. And that starts to like kind of rankle Lee of like, hello, you get kicked out of school again in this relationship. And like, you're, you're, you're not answering my texts anymore. Yeah, like I feel like she definitely starts cutting out Lee around the midpoint. Like, mm, like it's yeah. like kind of like used up, but then there has to be something at the ultimate test. Like I'm imagining like her at prom and like, snapping at Lee or, re or like what uh, Jan was saying, like oh, he Lee realizes how much they were just a research subject kind of a thing. Maybe here's an idea. Um, like maybe, okay, then this wouldn't work with the suspension as easily, but like if Lee like wanted to like have, like have a date to the dance or whatever, and they just, Kate just like 
totally dumps them for the other person. Oh. Like it's a friendship so date. You they know? were going to go on a friendship date to the prom and it was going to yeah. be Lee's first time doing something social like that. It's yeah. Just a big deal. So not banned okay. from prom then. Not banned from yeah. prom then. Yeah, not banned from prom. But like that would make it more of like a... Like that's, that's a way to do it. in school... I don't know if this was common. We had in school suspension, which was like you still went to school, but you mm. had to like sit in a room all day. And it was like actually not helpful for anyone, but you know, we could do that. that she... sure. Yeah. I love America. It's so strange. It was like it's if you like were five jail. minutes late to school, they would send you to ISS, which is in school suspension, and you would literally just have to sit in this room. And like sometimes teachers would drop off work, and sometimes they'd be like, no, "You were five minutes late to school, and now you don't get anything." So you just have to sit in this room for the whole time. It was completely useless and very stupid. Um, the story ends with Kate going to the dance with Lee, right? Just as friends. No, I think I think she blows it off. She has to do something else to make it up with Lee. Yeah, they're, they're going to miss the dance. Like, like at the ultimate test, she decides, Kate decides to not go to the prom with the girlfriend. Hmm. Instead of Lee. And that totally lines up with their flaw because they're treating people like props. Oh, yeah. here, here's a thought. Here's a thought. Like, if the if the plan from the beginning was, like, I want you to help me get into a relationship that's going to hurt me, um, the bat, like, it could always sort of be like, like, and then after that, like, Lee, I'll hang out with you at the rest of the dance while I'm alone. And then when the actual, like, hurt comes, like, Kate is just too torn up and doesn't hang out with Lee and Lee feels abandoned. I feel like she can't be torn up because the thing that's going to make her change is that she's actually heartbroken from Lee. So... And it would be a mm. double whammy with the relationship loss, right? Because the other person yeah. would like see their notes or whatever. Mm. Yeah, what if okay, what what if the relationship with the girlfriend doesn't work out? Kate it just feels like really annoyed by the whole thing. Like it just didn't work out. It wasn't the thing that it, it isn't that it isn't like pain, but it also just isn't useful and she stews and doesn't show up for Lee, who is like, I've been I've been waiting, like we had a plan. Mm-hmm. And then, mm. you know, that's that's when Lee's like, you know, we're like, don't talk to me anymore. And then that's the real pain. Yeah, that could be. Is the antagonist the girlfriend? I think it is. I, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because she is the one who like. Right. Because it's either the, the girlfriend or the friend who wrote the book. And it's like, you just need heartbreak. It you really know? sounds to me like like <laughs> like the antagonist is Kate. That she's her own antagonist. Yeah. It's kind of the vibe I'm getting. It's it would be tricky to pull off, and I'm sure people might watch the movie and disagree, but that's that's where my brain is right now. We could also like just leave it empty for the for the moment. But I mean I, I think there's a way to do it both ways. Um mm -hmm. you're right that she's the central point of conflict. <laughs> like the, Which the, I love. I think yeah. that's great. It's very coming of age, you know? Like, it really is just wrestling with yourself. So she has in-school suspension, and now she has to be much more strategic with her time. Yeah. yeah. And she attracts the attention of a girlfriend. And, yeah, so what's the ending? So, so she goes to the prom with the girlfriend instead of Lee and ruins the friendship. Like, why would she agree to go to the prom with Lee, though? If that's her goal the whole time. Well, I, I, I think I think she doesn't go to the prom with the girlfriend, right? Like, like she wants she she gets broken up before the prom as as expected, but it doesn't but give her the desired she... feeling, and then she blows off Lee at the party at the prom. Well, I don't think that she would agree to go with Lee if her objective the whole time was to get dumped at prom. Like she would be counting on that up to the beat up to the maybe, end. Maybe maybe it's like a a deal she made with Lee earlier, like. <laughs> Lee helps her like strategize with things. If she's like, as long as you go, like, like it's a deal they made that that's she just what I get one that's dance what I at the prom or something. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what, what I thought. It? Like early on, it's just like we can hang out, not even in a date way, but like we can hang out that day because like I've got nothing else going, and you'll have nothing else going, and we're friends. And then when the when the breakup happens, which happens before the prom as expected, you know, 
instead of showing up at the prom to then ignore the prom and hang out with Lee, Kate just goes home. You know what this sort what of feels it? like? This sort of feels like a 2021, 20, like, uh, John Hughes movie. Mm. Sure. Like, without the shittiness, you know? Um, like, there's a little bit of Ferris Bueller in here. So what if she... So what if they go to the prom together, the girlfriend dumps her as expected, and it's so, like, it's so meaningless that Kate storms out and abandons Lee there without doing the dance. And then Lee mm. finds her notes and real, or f yeah, finds her notes and realizes that the whole thing has been has been fake. manipulative. I like the I like that idea. And I also like the idea of the thing that you have under new obstacles agrees to have one one dance with Lee at the prom. I think that's something that she would promise like way up front, like yeah. mm. like in in the first part of Act Two. Like that's kind yeah. Okay. So I, here, here's the one thing I think we need to solve that, I don't, that I'm not sure about. It's sort of like, okay, we up to the end of act two, we've got this big like falling out with Lee, the girlfriend, Kate has, and then the going into the all's lost moment, we presumably have uh, Kate sort of realize like the emotional impact of treating people like playthings. Um, but after that point, like what would, what would be a good, all or nothing in final fight. Like what would be a good like event or thing to move towards that would like pick up energy? Like what would it be like another like school thing? Because I feel like the the height the, the cliche high school thing is you know she would break the tiara at prom and throw it out into the audience. Right. Like we need something where it's like where she makes it up to Lee, right? And well, it's like fun. it's not about her book anymore or something. Here's a thought. Um, maybe bad idea. Um, Lee is moving to a different public school, and Kate just actually needs to say goodbye before Lee leaves. And it's just like a one-time last thing where they kind of like patch up the relationship, and then actually have the true sorrow of them parting. I like parts of that a lot. I, maybe it's like yeah, a, a send off. I love that note. I like parts of that a lot. <laughs> no, no, I love the idea of like Lee is going away and they have to, and that there is actual like sorrow at the end. Like they, like they have, she has to say goodbye to a friendship. Like, I like that direction. I wonder if it's like, she's do, she has to like do a send off for Lee. Hmm. Like something that like to be the anti bully. And so like mend all yeah, wounds, I would you know, a big gesture, a big gesture. Um, <laughs> private dance. Oh shit. Oh shit. I don't know. I like that. <laughs> I get fixated. Like no, I like that. I get fixated on stupid shit like that though. So um I think that's kind of sweet. She has kind of to weird. Do, it has to give it has to sacrifice something. Like it has to it has to account for the emotion she has it has to be like taking everyone where they are. So what if it's like at first Lee says no, then the decisive action would have to be something that's completely her giving up everything. So like the metaphor, like the thing would be like, she's been writing this book in her notebook the whole time and she like burns the notebook or something and like shows what? that this is really not about that anymore. Like it's not about her novel. Like I she, think that that's like- the reads her book over the intercom and lets people laugh at it. Mm, mm. That's good. <laughs> I love that. I'm just saying that. <laughs> no, I, mean, I do, but uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's not Lee. But Lee, I do like but the, maybe, the yeah, unicorn but, was you all along. I don't know. But I do kind of oh. like the idea of stop, like stopping to chase the idea of making this book perfect and accepting that it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of shit. Yeah. So I think, I think way. that the, I think the decisive action has to be something with her accepting that, like giving up the book, mm. right? She hits she hits publish on Wattpad and has a whole prologue about how like, you know, how this isn't good and she's been such a shitty friend in the making of it. Enjoy. Mm. And then Blue sees that. <laughs> I feel like she can't have a book at all because it's I'm being picky, but I feel like she can't have a book at all because she can't have the attention. Right. She she posts like, the unfin the unfinished work in progress of the book and just says, "Enjoy, it's done." I'm a I'm a bad person. <laughs> Look at this. She burns the notes <laughs> on fire. In the day. <laughs> I also like the 
Lee is going to start home. I think that, yeah, Lee should definitely yeah. be able to get homeschooled with with her if that's what Lee wanted. Like, but she convinces Lee the is... parents to, like, let them be homeschooled together. What if Lee's getting homeschooled, but the fam but, like, is also moving to a different home? So they're no longer neighbors. You, are you just trying to do, like, a bittersweet thing? Is that what you're... I was kind of thinking about the bittersweet thing because it's coming of age, right? Like, I, I, right. I feel like it needs to end in a place where they're both going to grow up in their own ways and have their entire lives ahead of them, but this thing is going to teach them something. And I feel like that can't end with them living happily ever after while they're this young. You know? I, could be, I think, though, that, like, if she's learned the importance they both of both learn. She teaches Lee that, she, that, that uh, Lee can also be a bully. Um. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> she lets what she, she lets Lee punch her in the face. I kind of like that, honestly. <laughs> oh, it's like, I mean, she has to accept that what she has is good, and she needs to like be happy with that, you know, and that mm -hmm. like things will be hard no matter what she does, but like that she needs to be appreciative of the fact that like her life is good is part of it, right? Right. And I feel like her parents probably miss homeschooling her. So one solution is like to give them Lee. Like be like, my parents will homeschool you. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Or what if what if what if and here's a thought. Let's say Lee is moving soon and they're a very limited time. But before Lee goes, Kate could be like, Hey, do you want to spend a day, you know, co learning with me during my homeschool? And just spends yeah. a day in Kate's house learning with Kate's parents. And it's just a personal one-on-one -on -one kind of a thing that, that you know, Kate shares with only Lee. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, like, what if Lee has already, like, decided, like, Lee already is, like, accepted that they're going to a different school after the semester because of the bullying. Mm. Like that was, a, that was something that was going on to happen the whole time. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Like I wish I, like, I wish I could have been homeschooled. Like I'm basically, I'm planning to go to like a boarding school after the semester. Like that. That's the real ticking clock. I like that. And then when they have the, you know, sort of final like day together before that, before Lee goes, it's especially bittersweet because we've been building up to it. Yes, yeah, so they set up a private dance. She set up a private dance for Lee the the night before Lee's going to leave. Yeah, and what if it's how, like how are we picturing the private dance? Are we picturing those other people there? Or are we picturing that it's like just the two of them in, in Kate's that. house? It could be in Kate's like, house with Kate's parents. I I I do the version I have in my head is like other like the, all the characters from the movie, but mm. maybe that's. Um, too sentimental. I kind of like the idea of the one-on-one -on -one because what what Kate has been sort of chasing is this sort of societal status of like, I have now like joined your ranks. And I kind of like the idea of nobody else gets to know this, if that yeah. makes sense. Because it can't be about her image. So right. like- Nobody sees it. Yeah. I kind of like that it's, a, it's completely private and it's like just something that Lee always wanted. Maybe Leah had mentioned that they wanted something before, like, because Kate is pursuing this relationship so hard that we'd probably hear, like, what Lee wants out of life. Like, I really just want to go do whatever, whatever, before I go to boarding school. Like, it's something I've always wanted to do. And Kate never cared, you know? And then it's like, yeah. I mean, it could be the dance. The dance is kind of sweet. Like, if they... But like, it could be something bigger that Kate didn't want to do necessarily. Well, here's a thought. Let's say it's that, and the thing that's sort of sacrificed is Lee doesn't entirely forgive her. Like they do the dance and, you know, Kate's sort of doing this as a way to like, as a mea culpa and Lee accepts it. And they kind of come to like an understanding, but Lee, you know, is still like, I don't entirely forgive you. I just don't think I can, it's way too early. And then Lee leaves, like the town, and that's it. And that's like the, and that's the sort of the genuine heartbreak, for both of them. I like that the idea that she, kind of but she doesn't like, get self. Hmm? Sorry, it's, it, you're it's cutting. Oh. So I was I was thinking that like if if 
like if uh, Kate is doing this dance to sort of make it up to Lee, if she does it in a way that, you know, they're sort of added like a new understanding and Lee appreciates it, but says that she doesn't really forgive her and, you know, needs that kind of time. And then Lee has to leave because she's moving, because they're moving rather. Um, that could leave Kate with a very complicated set of emotions that well, I mean, leaves her wiser. I don't necessarily want it to be like too, tr what if it's like Lee is like, I think like I, I want to try to fix this with you and they're like pen pals. Could so be. it's like, so it's like, it's not that everything is good now, but they're going to be- Because part pals. of, I, I think part of this movie, because the first half has so much fun in it, like the end has to be kind of fun too. Right. Like that's kind of the promise of the movie. Do you like the idea of them being pen pals? Yeah, I, I, I want there to be like a win. Like, yeah, and maybe this sort of coincides with, um, you know, Kate actually maybe having a relationship with said girlfriend, you know? Yeah. Kate, what if, Kate what is if, in a real relationship with the girlfriend? Is that what you said? Yeah. I mean, it's just an idea. It's just so it's like there's some sort of like positive thrust towards the end because I'm a hack. Um <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I was kind of thinking, I had a, I had a thought. So like, <laughs> it's the really, the really on the nose version, you know, like Kate finally has the genuine heartbreak because of the Lee situation. Right. And then when they sort of like try to patch it up and do the dance, you know, Kate could sort of admit like, you know, I had been kind of looking forward to this kind of heartbreak, but I'm really not enjoying this. Like, this isn't what I wanted. And then Lee, ever the mentor, could be like, well, but maybe it's what you needed. And like, maybe, you know, we can be friends again once we've grown up a little bit. And like, let's keep talking until that happens because it's a process. Yeah, um, he will give her another chance. Yeah, but also it's sort of like being completely honest, honest with her, right? Of like, yeah. you know, you like you have experienced pain, but it doesn't mean that you're grown up. No. Yeah, that's good. Um, I also like that, like the writing becomes being pen pals, and that it becomes something private, and that mm. it's about like sharing things with people. So she like gets rid of the novel, and they're going to be pen pals instead. It's kind of nice how that ties into writing, um, and she's kind of like, um, oh yeah, this is yeah. I definitely think that this should be part of it. And the and Lee tells her she can't treat people as pawns. Yeah. Um, so that's up here. I'm not a hundred percent sold on Kate getting back in the relationship with girlfriend. Um, so I, I feel like that wasn't, that doesn't wasn't, have to um, be, it doesn't have to be like a relationship. It's like something positive. Like she, they're all cool. Yeah. Like she has to have some kind of like thing to do next. Like I need to know where she's, what she's going to do next. Like, is she going to stay at the public school? Is she going to go back to being homeschooled? Like what's she going to do now? And like, mm -hmm. And I, I want it to be, I agree that it should be something positive. I think, I think it could, I mean, like I could, I could imagine her going to like the girlfriend of being like, you know, I'm sorry that that didn't work out. Or can we still be friends? The girlfriend being like, yeah, sure. We can be friends. And like, you know, they, they continue to sort of being in school together. What if, what if, here's a thought. What if Lee kind of admits over the course of the story that they kind of want to be a writer also. And what if part of the pen pal thing is like sending pages back and forth. I love that. That's kind of cute. They write a unicorn novel together. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not a unicorn. It's an usicorn. The golden <laughs> horn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, who? I don't want. <laughs> I didn't realize he said who isn't a writer there. Hooves. 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 All right. So I think if this works. Uh, I have a thought for an obstacle, by the way, kind of earlier in the story when Kate yeah. is, you know, trying to romance girlfriend. Kate's never been in a relationship before, so is kind of fumbly at it. And, you yeah. know, that's that's a real obstacle if you're trying to get somebody to be in a genuine relationship with you that's genuine enough so that when it fails, it feels real. So that's a real obstacle if you don't really know how to take somebody out on a date and, or how to treat somebody, you know? This is something I put in that I probably should have talked about, but I just had the ideas for going. But at the midpoint, she gets the in-school suspension and attracts the attention of the girlfriend. And so the girlfriend dumps her boyfriend to get with Kate. And then K Kate is going through the stereotypical high school dates to try to fall in love. And she's like messing them up. 
it's like she was pursuing the boyfriend here, then yeah. she's trying the the because he's like, a really just, fun. He's like, like a really. Like, oh yeah, sorry. But it's kind of should, like yeah. Man, every time I every time you're about to say something, I'm about to say something, we like cancel each other out. Say what? What, what are you gonna say? I'm sorry. So say she keeps like epically failing at pursuing the boyfriend for this whole for the whole first half of the second act. Um, and like she like gets in like little relationships that don't mean anything and like just can't like the like gets rejected by people. Maybe at first she just like asks people out so that she knows will reject her. And then it's like, oh, I'm so heartbroken. And then realizes that she's not like that didn't matter. So like she's building up to asking out this boy that she already knows has a girlfriend because she assumes that she'll like get rejected. It's like a it's a guaranteed rejection. And uh I love yeah. that term yeah. that, that phrasing, guaranteed rejection. And that would be like a plus for her, right? <laughs> yeah. And like part of the part of the eventual breakup with the girlfriend could involve the girlfriend being like, you know, I left my boyfriend because of you, you know. Like you were that. using me, yeah, yeah. Um, also, I mean, like, what, what if at, at, at a certain point, like, if 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 Kate is doing these sort of mini dates, um, what if there's sort of this point where Kate is sort of terrified of like, what if I'm incapable of feeling sad about breakups because it yep. hasn't happened yet? Like, what if this is what if what if I just went through what everybody goes through just now? What if this was the real deal? Because right. she has she hasn't experienced the real deal yet. So she, what what is what does she know for for comparison? And I just can't feel that. Like that could be terrifying, you know. Like mm -hmm. what if what if I'm what if I'm broken? You know what if I what if I don't have that ability? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you know, like in The Graduate, um, when Dustin Hoffman takes um, Elaine out on those terrible dates to try to get rid of her, I can kind of feel like a sort of like accidental version of that. Of like, oh no, I'm really blowing it. I don't mean to be blowing it, but I am blowing it. Mm. So her, her antagonist is herself. She's self sabotaging. We might have enough now to go ahead and go through it all real quick. We might, Alexi, yeah. do you want to take us through? Okay. So our protagonist is this girl named Kate, short for Katarina. She's 14. Oh, yeah. She has to wear a lot of awesome hats. Um, she fantasizes about being left at the altar. She's an aspiring writer, like an aspiring novelist, and she's homeschooled. And she, her everything in her life is perfectly normal. Like her parents are supportive and great. Like there's no problem. She's never really had trauma, and she um, and but she like wants to be this novelist who like writes really really deep things. So she self published this book that she thinks is like her, her like masterpiece. And she gets feedback, like reviews on Goodreads that tell her like that people don't like her book. And they say that it wasn't emotionally resonant. And this makes her super upset. So she talked with her friend who is a good writer who's gotten a lot of praise um, and who writes about his parents' divorce. And basically learns that, you know, all good writers have experienced trauma so she needs trauma. And so her first attempt is she's gonna try to break up her parents so that she can have a divorce in her life. But they're unfortunately is incredibly rock solid. And when her parents realize what she's trying to do, they kind of sit her down and they're like, you know, we're great, but you know, we have experienced heartbreak before. And like, this is, this is not that. Like in high school, you know, we had our hearts broken and they're expecting this to help her realize that like they're solid, but instead she's like, oh my God, that's it. I need to have heartbreak in high school. So she convinces her parents to let her enroll at public school so that she can get dumped at prom and be quote unquote punched in the heart so that she can write true devastating emotional books that are gonna be just like super edgy. So. Now she's enrolled at public school and she's meeting a bunch of different people at the school, a bunch of different public school kids. She's like taking notes, trying to figure this out. So the first thing she does, is she's asking out people in order to get rejected. And she's trying to go for guaranteed rejections so that she can experience heartbreak, but none of it is affecting her. Um, she eventually chooses a romantic target 
that she believes is a guaranteed a guaranteed rejection because it's a it's a guy involved who's already in a relationship and she's like this would be perfect and when he rejection rejects her and it doesn't mean anything she decides to go after the love triangle angle so now she's trying to get involved in the relationship and the love triangle thinking that that's going to really break her heart um she ends up meeting this kid um who's been bullied a lot named lee lee kind of wants to be a writer um and is planning and because of all the bullying they've planned to go to boarding school at the end of the semester so they're they already have one foot out the door and kate kind of protects them in exchange for information and he doesn't know exactly that that's what this is that like it's an informational exchange but um but that's what kate's trying to get from them because she's like wow you've really suffered i want to suffer too um and something that they agree on really early is that Lee's articulated that they really just want to have like one good experience because their whole public school experience is absolute trash. And they just want to have one good dance at the prom before they go away to boarding school. And Kate says, I will do it. So meanwhile, Kate's stirring up a bunch of drama. She doesn't actually know how public school works. She never bothered to care. So she ends up getting in school suspension which makes it much harder to be strategic and trying to get her heart broken because now she can't interact with the rest of the students. So she has to be much more um, good with her time. And this new like bad kid reputation attracts the attention of the girlfriend from the love triangle, which is unexpected. So the girlfriend dumps the boyfriend to get with Kate. And now Kate has a girlfriend and she takes the girlfriend through all the stereotypical like movie high school dates, trying to get herself to fall in love so that when she eventually gets dumped, it'll really hurt. And um, she starts getting worried that she's never gonna feel sad about breakup, that maybe something's wrong with her. So it's all building up to the prom. She's gonna go with her girlfriend. It's gonna be great. She's gonna get dumped. And um, so she goes to the prom with the girlfriend, she's gonna meet Lee there to dance and Kate dumps her because, or the girlfriend dumps her, I guess, because, probably because Kate re reveals that something with the boyfriend, the girlfriend realizes that Kate's been manipulative and dumps her. And Kate really tries to feel something in that moment. She wants it to be her big disaster moment, but she feels nothing. She feels nothing at all. She doesn't care. And so she storms out and abandons Lee without doing the dance. And Lee, in their sadness, finds Kate's abandoned notebook and realizes that this whole thing was just an experiment and that Kate was using them. So now the all is lost. Uh, Lee confronts Kate and says, like, you can't treat people like pawns and is really, really pissed and friend dumps her. So she uh, gets friend dumped at the prom. And this actually crushes Kate. This was something she wasn't expecting. And it's actually incredibly heartbreaking. And um, it forces her to kind of realize that she's effed up. Like she's made a huge mistake. And that it's not fun to get your heart broken. That it actually really, really sucks. And that it doesn't have to be romantic. And so Lee's leaving the next day. And they're not friends anymore. It's devastating. And Kate, to try to make it up to Lee, sets up a private dance, maybe like in Lee's like driveway or something, so that they can have a nice makeup moment. And so Kate goes to Lee's house. And at first, Lee is like, leave me alone. Like, I don't think you've changed. But then Kate shows that Kate like burns the book she's been working on or something. Like basically shows that she's throwing away everything she was trying for and that this is genuine this isn't fake so lee agrees to give her another chance and they have their nice little dance and even though lee isn't completely on board like lee's kind of like levels with kate and is honest with kate about how much this affected them and that kate needs to like learn how to be a better friend they agree to be pen pals so now lee leaves her boarding school kate and kate and them are going to be pen pals um Lee is writing, uh, maybe they're co-writers together, swapping notes back and forth. And um, 
Meanwhile, Kate stays at public school. She befriends the girlfriend and she is just trying to learn how to like, accept where she's at and like be a kid and be grateful for what she has and not worry about growing up too fast. The All end. right. Great job. I'm into it. I'm into it, it too. Heart. It occurs to me that if she's 14 and just starting high school, maybe it's not prom because I feel like it's a senior thing, but it could be, it's a, it's a dance. It's a dance. Yeah. It's there a are thing. stupid dances every year at the high school I went to, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. But, this was really fun. Yeah, yeah. it was. There's definitely a movie in there somewhere. Um, yeah, there's something going on. Yeah, something's up. There's something going. I can totally picture a scene where, like, you know, Kate like melodramatically like prints out her book, deletes the file on the computer, holds up the book, and says, "I'm getting rid of the book," and lights it on fire. But then it like, causes like a small fire, and it's a whole thing. Like, I, yeah. it's a very I look. I, I, coming of age lends itself to heart, you know. I can imagine the trailer, and that is something. The scene where she's trying to get her parents to get a divorce, like, and so the seeds mm-hmm. of discord, like that. That's a character, you know. That's somebody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just really keep picturing her in different ridiculous hats, and I really enjoy that. And I don't know why I'm enjoying that so much, but just like this <laughs> kid in a beret, like taking notes around the middle or around the high school, just really amuses me. I'm picturing her like wearing a hat and then like in each subsequent scene wearing an additional hat on top of the previous hat. Um, yeah. Just an ever growing tower of hats. Like um, that, one, that one kid's book. Yeah. Um, it, 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 I like it. I mean, like it feels like the kind of thing that would play at a Sundance, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's and cute. Directed by Olivia Wilde. Thanks, Chris. Chris says John Hughes would be proud. Kate in the hat. Kate in the hat. <laughs> I like punched in the heart. That's a great uh, title, Avi. Yeah, she just wants to be punched in the heart. Punch me <gasps> in the heart. Yeah. All right, cool. guys. Well, well thank well, you so it. much. For- we we yeah. made great time compared to our train sci-fi episode, yeah, which went, like took three anymore. hours. Which took <laughs> three <laughs> hours. I still have trauma from that, you know. Well, let's if let's you- let's uh, let's try to add sci-fi elements to this plot. So it takes place on Mars, <laughs> and. <laughs> They have drugs to prevent you from suffering. And what's a Martian prom? You know, like that's oh what I want to know. <laughs> Some sort of human sacrifice, probably. Avi, have you? Do you watch The Expanse? I don't actually. It's so good. It's really good. You've I'm got told. to watch it. It's I'm really. Told. You would like it. You would like I, it. I've tried to get into it. I, I should really give it another shot. <laughs> it's good. Hey guys, so we'll have- how how, oh, how have we grown? How have we grown over this past two hours? What have we learned about ourselves? What's the revelation that makes us more grown up? That you guys don't like it? unicorns <laughs> or that joke. And I've tried so hard. And Alexi would not type that word into well, a you had access. You had edit No, no, no. Access. I was waiting to persuade you. So you would, because when you like an idea, you type it immediately. And when you don't like an idea, you don't type it and wait, that, hope that it doesn't get like that. I don't add it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, Punch me in the unicorn heart. No, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. There you go. No, uh, there punch go. my unicorn in the heart. No, her her melodramatic book can have unicorns. That works. No, 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 no. We're 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 done with the unicorn. Unicorns are dead to me. It's the dead. hat. The no, hat that's is, a title. The hat is unicorn themed. Oh. <laughs> there we go. There yeah. we go. Cool. So yeah. if you all have any ideas for our next one, um, this was right. actually yeah, this was a request I think from. Uh, some emails. So if you will have a request for the next prompt or just an idea for the next prompt, you can find us on Discord and recommend it, or you can email me, whatever it is. Um, and we're going to start trying to do these with John. John's going to start joining us. We're going to start doing them during the coffee class time. So um, we'll let you know when that's starting. We'll let you know if the next, like when the next one of these will be, but it might be during coffee class, which would be very interesting. And knowing John, he will want to do a noir gritty. father son gritty. <laughs> oh, oh man! No, no. Do make, you know what we have to, make to do? John we have to do, do that, fantasy. that story about the PI that he really, really wants to get into. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He interviewed a PI recently. Uh, relatively recently, and he was like, wow, that character. So, so tragic. So interesting. I think we should force him to write a, an epic fantasy romantic comedy. Oh, my God. I, I would want to do a spiritual successor to Bridget Jones, 
John, you know what John told but, me? But, that but it in took the Middle him Earth. Three hours. Oh, but in Middle Earth. It took him three hours to get through Bridget Jones, which I think is the funniest thing. <laughs> he hated it. He hated, he hated it. it. He hated you know, every moment of it. I, I very recently watched um, um, Mamma Mia 2, Here We Go Again. Um, and it's co written it by Richard I haven't seen it. It's co written by Richard Curtis. It does have really? an airport scene. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a joke at this point. Like, I mean, it's not almost, it is a joke. Like every Richard Curtis movie, every fucking one. Even like, uh, what's that, what that terrible movie? Do you mean like running through the airport to catch someone before their gate? Is that what that means? Yeah, yeah. Wait. In this one, in this one it's just somebody it showing up at an airport. <laughs> no, say, Richard like, Curtis does it in anymore. every movie. It has every movie. Uh, what was that movie yesterday? The one with about the, the, Beatles, the Beatles song, right? Like he wrote that. Like that. The one he stole. <laughs> yeah, God. Oh, he stole yeah. that idea? Oh, uh, there's a whole story. I'll tell you about Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't like the movie very much. Short of Ed Sheeran's acting, which was... Uh... <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. No, the song... I don't know if you've seen the movie. He has writes a song about penguins. Oh, and like, okay. and it's, and he's like, and it's him performing the song earnestly. Like, this is the best song I could write in like an hour. And it was a terrible love song about penguins. And I thought that was the best part of the movie. Wow. In real oh, life, no. that song would go platinum. God. Okay. Okay. I'm all done. Right. I'm done. All right. Well, we will see you all in the Discord, hopefully, which you can check the link in the description. And yeah, let us know what prompt you want next. Thank you for coming and helping us to to write this thing. Bye. Bye.